this case study. It's not perfect, but it'll squeeze in. What can parents do to help children exhibit lower levels of social aggression? I think from the beginning, we have to have the courage to be clear that social aggression hurts others and that we will not tolerate the behavior. We will not tolerate his verbal and indirect aggression. It's top-down management. We will not tolerate. Children tell us in our research that social aggression is a really great thing to do because the adults don't know you do it and you'll never get punished for it. I think they underestimate us. That's hubris. I think she's underestimating kids. Because <laughs> in order to know how social indirect aggression works, you have to be in the gossip chain. And by default, teachers and parents are not cool or are excluded from the gossip chain. So <laughs> The parents are going to punish the wrong person because <laughs> they're not going to see all the links to get to Jada or Jada's mom, who's the person who pushed the button to get Will Smith to act out. So, zero tolerance punishes the wrong person. But I think they do so because we are reluctant to intervene. If one child hits another, we know full well what to do. That's unacceptable. We will separate the children and there will be consequences. But when a child says... There will be consequences is fear-mongering. <laughs> it's just making people who are rule followers more scared and it's making abusers have more room to be abusive because <laughs> the people that follow zero tolerance are the people that that don't break rules and the people that break rules would just say oh great i can dodge this better so, but it creates the illusion for the teachers and administrators that in a three-year-old classroom might help. you can't sit at this table or a child refuses to speak to another child, we as adults are more reluctant to speak up and to say that hurts people's feelings, that's not okay, stop doing that. Yes, but if you, an asshole, sit at my table, you're hurting the rest of the table's feelings. <laughs> Those people don't have feelings too? <laughs> what happened with this set? Yeah. We need to send the message that you can't say you can't play. I still remember our older daughter's second grade birthday party. So listen to this example. This is a case study of how she's using indirect aggression, ignoring her, her girl's feelings, ignoring the whole situation and just running it over with her own ideals of the world, which is just punish people more and they'll behave better. Embarrass people more, they'll behave better. Not wanting to leave anybody out, I ended up with 16 second grade girls at my So she had this injunction, people can't be left out. Then she's flooded, her and her husband are flooded with 16 girls, which is too much for them. It's her fucking fault. <laughs> but she's trapped by the rule, and now she wants other people to be trapped by the rule. The ideal house for a sleepover. That's a very bad mistake. Um, I have it's a bad mistake. And did she learn from the mistake and say how she improved? No, that's Dodge because it's all about kids doing stuff wrong, not about her doing stuff wrong. Husband and I had our sleeves rolled up. We worked hard. We had everybody seated at the table for pizza. We were standing in the kitchen eating our pizza because there was no other chair left in the house. And Look at the pizza story. They're standing around, totally worthless information, because that's the purpose of confusion. I want to know what kind of pizza it was. Was it pepperoni? <laughs> yes, she could dive into the pizza pepperoni and the delivery person spend five minutes there. Yeah, I don't want to know if it's Hawaiian. It shouldn't have pineapple on Hawaiian. I, I look, it's just, you know, these are very important points. Because she's self-regulating and dodging her own shame to make this story feel good for her. And a girl said, let's talk about who's the most popular. And I skidded into the dining room. I said, no. We she skidded into the dining room when she heard this. How dare someone, a girl, Tom with 16, 15 other girls say, let's talk about who's most popular. Is this a common teenage girl conversation? <laughs> that. Girls are wired for social <laughs> control, but mommy skids into the conversation. And does what? We don't. I don't want you to talk about that. That could hurt people's feelings. 
she does tongue policing. I was policing her language in her yes. own judgment. And you can't say that either. You can't say that either. You can't. That's judgment. That's judgment. That's judgment. That's judgment. So she skids into this group of 16 girls having pizza, having a good time. It says, you might hurt someone's feelings because you said that. You can't say that. Is she hurting people's feelings by saying what she's saying? <laughs> How come she can hurt feelings for all 16 girls or most of the girls <laughs> where no one's complained in the group <laughs> that let's talk about popular girls hurting anybody's feelings? And she's embarrassing her, her, her daughter. Like, who's yes. mom coming in like that? And watch what happens. She even admits it. And she said, I was going to say your daughter was the most popular. But she's got 15 <laughs> friends at her house. Yeah. <laughs> That's a compliment. And I said, you just hurt everybody else's feelings in this room. Did she verify this? No. She just made up a story to make that girl wrong. And I don't want you all to talk about that. And she said, I can talk about whatever I want. Look, the girl had boundaries, but she shut her down. Shut me down. You talk, get your space and time, but you won't honor mine. You won't honor mine. Shut she didn't honor down. the girl's voice. Mine. Shut me down. You talk. So she's modeling bully aggression. That's what she's modeling. That's not the words, but that's what the energy is and she's modeling to the point where she recognizes her daughter's feelings and i said not at my house you know much to my daughter's mortification she mortified her daughter so she run over her daughter's feelings and 15 other girls feelings and no one complained she could have gone in and let me check. Did anyone get hurt? And then did this action. No, she proactively and co co opted the whole thing and shut everything down and said other people were hurt, which was not verified. There was no argument to discuss whether there was any harm done. She shut it down to the mortification of her daughter. And look at this realization. Now, do I think that I cut off all social aggression for the rest of the evening? No. The rest of the evening. <laughs> so this tone policing didn't even work for the whole night. Why didn't she even bother to give her daughter a mortification? And why is she sharing this story to a group to give an example of social policing or how to handle it? This is a totally shameful, ridiculous advice, which is a lot of the parenting advice from experts. But at least they knew that I didn't like it. And if who fucking cares whether she likes it or not? We still don't know what kind of fucking pizza they had. Jeez. Oh, fuck, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I didn't like it. They knew I'm invading. They knew I'm not a cool mom. All of us as adults would be a little bit braver about intervening, then I think we might have some hope. No. Where's your proof? Adults in intervene more. How is that going to be any better? Where's your evidence? I bet those kids can't wait to go back to that girl's house again for a great night of pizza and judgment. <laughs> well, this. they can just judge her behind her back. So yeah, imagine never... what those kids are going Let's to... punish <laughs> this mom. And the, <laughs> yeah. the daughter's probably doing the same thing. My that, mom's that daughter's bitch, fucked blah, blah, blah. at school now. That, that kid's fucked. She might as well just <laughs> get around in a boiler suit and a pair of boots. <laughs>